Aleluias. We read the one of the Epistle of Jesus. Now we reverence reverence to the Word of God. I'd like to, those who can to stand up. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 13. First Corinthians thirteen verse thirteen. First Corinthians thirteen thirteen. Amen. Agora, pois, permanecem a fé a esperança e o amor. Estas três, mas a maior desta, destas é o amor. Te adoramos bem. Lord, we praise you and thank you for this moment of fellowship, for everything that you have done in the service. And we plead to you that in your word you may continue blessing your people, your church. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. Apostle Paul, when he writes to the church, he speaks of many topics. The book of Corinthians, this letter to the church of Corinthians, Corinthians, he speaks about idolatry, you know, the service of supper of the Lord, behavior, many things. But when he comes to chapter 13, he speaks of the supreme excellence and he speaks about three things that the church had to could never uh, go away with without so three things that the church that man the servant of the Lord cannot remove from his life so he says that the first thing is faith the second thing is hope, and the third is love. So this is interesting, because when we look to the first word, faith, we are reminded of a couple of verses there are written in the Bible that say that, say the following, whatever is not by faith, is a sin. The word also says, without faith, it is impossible, impossible to please God. Impossible to please God. The word also says that the righteous will live by faith but if he goes astray from the faith, see faith, if faith does not remain in him, according to the Bible, my soul take, has no pleasure in him. So, when we look through the aspect of salvation, salvation is also by faith, by faith. Because by faith, you are saved. Because by grace, you are saved through faith. And this does not come from you. It is God's gift. And when they asked the, the apostles what was necessary for us to be saved, they answered, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you shall be saved. And Jesus says the following, Whoever believes will be saved. And if you do not believe, you're not going to be condemned. You are already condemned. So if you don't believe, you are already condemned. But if you believe, you will be saved if I remain believing. If I remain in faith. Because if I abandon my faith, or if I uh, and sink in faith, then now I'm not going to be saved. 
I'm not saying this. I'm saying this because the Bible states this. So faith is very important in the life of man. Faith is the firm foundation. What else? And the proof of the things that you wait for. Faith is the firm foundation. Again, of the things that are not seen, because you you don't have to see in order to believe, but you need to have to believe first before you can see. If you if you believe, my brother and sister, you see God's glory. If I believe, I'll see God's glory. So the faith of God is is tested. I'm going to. Uh, in Brazil, you will use. You are going to gamble. Try my luck. This is not faith. It's a surface su superstition. This kind of faith does not lead men to life because it's a human, rational faith and evil. Because it confuses men, and God is not a God of confusion. So faith is the firm foundation, is the basis, is the foundation. A house needs to have foundation, or the, otherwise a house, uh, there is a house built upon the rock and a house built on sand. The rock is a faith in the word of God. So Paul speaks about this. If the brethren want to know a little bit more about faith, write down Hebrews Hebrews chapter 11 by faith by faith by faith by faith by faith you will see many times uh, this Bible uh, this ver uh, the verse is there saying this by faith Abram by faith so go to Hebrews chapter 11 and this needs to remain. If you leave tonight from the service, you may forget everything else that was said here. But remain in faith. And the Lord also speaks, saying that after faith there is hope. And in Romans chapter 8, verse 18 says the following. Verse 24 and 25 says the following because in hope we are saved therefore salvation the, the hope that is seen is not really hope because because what somebody when somebody sees something they, they are not going to be waiting for something it's very similar to faith right but but when in hope we are saved. There's a verse that is very interesting that says the following. How is it to have hope? How do I have hope? People today, they are desperate. Otherwise, otherwise in other words, they don't have hope. The world is in this situation because it's been lacking in men hope. Somebody sometimes people take their own lives. Why? Because they do no longer have any hope. They lost all hope. And the word also says that hope needs to remain. And the Lord says the following Christ in us. Hope of eternal life so whoever has Christ has life so if you enter here my brother and sister without hope know that you will leave this place here with Christ and with Christ and in Christ you're gonna have from this day forward hope of glory hope of eternal life and it says the following But if we wait for something that we do not see with patience, 
we wait for these things. And there is a verse that is very interesting that says the following. I'm mentioning several verses, so I'm going to continue doing so. So take a look. The God of hope will fill you with all the joy and peace through your trust in Him so that you may overflow of hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. So, it is the power of the Holy Spirit that causes Christ to inhabit in us and then we have hope. And the prayer of Paul at that moment for the church is so that the God of hope, our God, would fill and you can only feel a vessel, a receptacle, if you have, if the vessel is empty. So my soul is thirsting for God, so it's empty. So the Lord comes and fills that emptiness. So if there's a song that says, if you, if you're in your soul, there's no, there's an emptiness, if you can no longer sing, don't cry, my, my brother. Christ transforms darkness into hope. That's how the song goes. And Christ is hope. Wait in God and rest in Him. And the Lord says that the Holy Spirit causes to overflow this hope in us, in our hearts. And when we sing the song that speaks about eternity, it is different because when you begin to hear the song that speaks about eternity uh, of this new heaven and this new earth our soul rejoices because that this is our hope the hope of one day being with the Lord in his eternity so hope needs to remain and the Lord speaks about love Want to know more about hope? Romans chapter 8 speaks only about this. How about love? You want to know a little more about love? According to Corinthians 13. That's as if even if I spoke the tongue of angels, if I didn't have love, I will be a metal that does not sound. If I have a spirit of prophecy and knew all the mystery of science and all the faith in a way that I would transport the mountains, but had no, not love, I would not be anything. If I share my all my fortune to, with the poor and gave my body to be burned and did not have love, none of this would be of any worth to me. And this afternoon, I was meditating on this. And I was reminded of the spiritual gifts. And the spiritual gift is related to the flower. Isn't it true? The flowers, they represent spiritual gifts. And after the flowers come the fruits. And the Bible, Bible also speaks about spiritual gifts as fruits of the Spirit. So when we see the spiritual gifts, wisdom, knowledge, and faith, uh, gifts of healing and wonders, and discernment, prophecies, uh, tongues, and interpretation. So now we're going to the fruits. The fruit says the following. First, the best that exists, love, joy, peace, goodness, long, long suffering, faith, and being tempered. So let's think a little bit about this. So if the first gift is wisdom, 
the first fruit is love. First fruit is love. And the Lord says that in the first commandment, what does it say? Love God above all things. This is wisdom. When you love God above everything else, this is wisdom. When you take this second gift, it speaks about knowledge. It's related to the fruit joy. The third gift, which is faith. And faith is related to, to peace. Who has faith lives in peace. Because faith, when there is faith in God, the one that was given by Christ Jesus, and says the following, I give you my faith, my faith I give to you. So whoever believes in Jesus has this fruit, peace. And I continue, this gift of healing is goodness. If you are sick, Lord, uses his goodness to heal men, to restore the physical or spiritual health of man. Wonders is a blessing of God. Discernment is related to the long suffering. When we discern things well, oh, longevity. When, when you serve the Lord, discern things, you're going to live long. When he speaks now about the gift faith, you see that this spiritual gift and is a fruit. So when he speaks about prophecy, which is a seventh gift, is related to faith. The fruit of prophecy is faith. You know why? Because faith is prophetic. It comes from eternity, goes through man, and goes back to eternity. It, it just doesn't come from us. Spiritual gifts, long suffering, interpretation, it's all related to temperance. And now we go back to love. In a few translations, the Bible is it's being changed a lot. We need to be careful with this. Little by little, things are being altered in a way that's so subtle that we may not even notice. In a few translation of the Bible, this, this word love is related to charity, but charity is not the same thing as love. Charity is a feeling that we have towards another person, to your neighbor. It is even the second commandment, love God in the first place and to your neighbor like yourself. But charity fails and there is verse 8 says love never fails because this love is not man's love this love is God's love and God says the following that God loved the world in such a way that his, his only begotten son that whoever believes in him may not perish but have eternal life Amen and there is another verse that says the following this is the love of God the reason why we are not destroyed so this is the love that needs to remain the love of God because man's God or charity this is something that is it is you love someone that loves you but Jesus says no you need to love even your enemies this is a, a different type of love. Love your mother, father, and son and daughter is even easy. Loving someone that is your neighbor is very easy, but loving your enemy, then only this love of God to be present in your heart so that we may be able to have this ability to love even the ones who do not love us or even hate us. So he said the following, so remain in faith and hope and charity but the greatest of them all even my Bob is wrong <laughs> that's why I just mentioned it 
about the Bible. A brand new Bible, they changed the version. The charity, is, here is charity, but it's not charity, it's love. But the greatest of this one is love. So this is, that's the love, which is the greatest connection that can exist between man and God. So when we pick up the book of Song of Solomon, that book speaks exactly about this love, right? I am my beloved, my beloved is mine. And it speaks about those things, about this feeling that exists between one towards the other. And it's interesting that in the verse, the, uh, the end of chapter 8, says the following, the waters may not drown this love, or the rivers overflow over it, or uh, erase, the waters will not erase, and the rivers not drown it. So it's a kind of love that is not a human love, because human love can be erased by by the waters, by the movements, by the feelings, by uh, when time passes, as the years pass, oh, the one that you love, you no longer love. And to drown is to take life, to kill, to destroy. So the love of God is impossible for me to erase God's love. I may sin. I may say, oh, no. No, God erased love. No one is going to go to hell because they sinned. Did you know that? If, if they went to heaven because they sinned, everybody would go to hell. Only the children, everyone else, but no one goes to hell because they sinned. They go to hell. We never s use the word hell, hell, but you only go to hell if you, do, if you reject God's love. God does not reject man because love, God loved the world in such a way s and sent his son exact to rescue man. But when we reject God's love, we are under a sentence of death, a judgment, a condemnation. So it is impossible to erase God's love. It's impossible to destroy God's love. The word says, if you have everything that you have for this love, surely they would despise his offer. So Jesus gave everything that he had not to leave this love, this love between him and the church, between him and you and I and each one of us. That's why we live this night knowing one thing, that God loves you. God wants to save you. Even if your sins may be too great, through the blood of Jesus, which is the manifestation of his love, the Bible says, who knows this first? Even if your sins were like, like blood, they will be white, white like wool, white low wool. God has this power of forgiving all our sins. And tonight we are here because we are enjoying this love that He has towards yours, mine, and our lives. He went to the Mount of Myrrh to burn the frankincense. He died on the cross of Calvary because He loves you and because He wants to save you. Amen. Let's hear a song of praise.
Glory to Jesus. Now we're going to have a word of glorification to the Lord. We praise your name, Lord. Because we do not deserve, Lord, such love, but you have sustained us. We're privileged, Lord, because we belong to the King of the universe. Because you are the author and finisher of our faith. Praise you for everything that you are in the name of Jesus. The Lord was showing through the spiritual gifts. The Lord has shown tonight a family. And spiritual gift is not to expose anyone. But the spiritual gift is a way that God has to communicate with man. And why God does that? Because he has a project in the life of this man. And the God whom we serve is that God is, always speaks with man. The Bible says that he speaks in dreams. And I have had many experiences with dreams. I'm going to open a little parenthesis here. One of my first son before he was born before Christianity had my uh, had given birth to my first son I dreamt of my by my first son and when my second son was being about to be born I dreamt about my second son and now before my uh, daughter-in-law became pregnant I also dreamt about my grandson so God reveals himself to us. He speaks to us. So the Lord is speaking with a family, especially. Why a family? Because we know that a family is God's project. And this family has had many arguments at home. Disagreements. And this is, has not helped in their, their relationship. Here in the spiritual gift, the Lord shows that that they have a child, but we can understand the child through two aspects. That can be a child, a son, a daughter, or it is something that was generated in their hearts through the Holy Spirit, which is salvation through Christ Jesus. So, in any way, here. This thing has interfered in the life of this child that could be, as I said, God's project or an actual child that is suffering with this behavior of the parents. And uh, the brother could see that there was upon this couple like a, a cloud. Cloud of dust is a dark dust. And what is the meaning of this? The dust is where we came from. We all came from the same place. We're made out of the same matter. Somebody may want to feel like they are better than the other. Know that you are built in the same way I was built and or any other person. We are made out of the same matter from the dust of the earth, from clay. So when it shows here this dust, so in other words, it is something that is produced by man that comes from the earth, that comes from below. The feelings, the thoughts, what you see, what you hear, what you feel, your understanding regarding things. And this has brought a sort of a disorganization in your lives. No one thing. God is not God. He's not a God of confusion. No. You know. So confusion. Wherever there is confusion, God is not present. But God wants to stay present in your lives. The Lord wants to be present. So what we need, we need to leave this confusion away. We'll two walk together if, not, if, not in, if they are not in an agreement. So you need to get into an, a sort of an agreement 
you need help for this agreement, seek the Lord. Because the string of three folds does not it's not broken easily. Put Jesus in your family, in your house, and everything else will the Lord will do for you. The Lord is, is doing this because he, he loves you. He takes pleasure in your life. God wants wants this marriage to continue, but you need to enter into an agreement. And another thing is a word called forgiveness. Couple, especially, they need to learn how to forgive one another because we do a lot of foolish things. So you need to learn how to forgive because if I don't forgive, I will not be forgiven. Right? So you need to put these things in order so that the child, the child's health may be restored. And the Lord was so showing a man that is very concerned about his son, has made choices that are not biblical, they're not part of the God's teaching for his life. And this man, he came here seeking a resource for his son. And the Lord is saying, I'm taking care of your son, but I need to take care of your life as well. Because sometimes it's like this, we come seeking a blessing for someone else, I want somebody else to get go straight, but I don't want to straighten up my path. Oh, I'm all wrong, but I want to say, oh, my wife, I want you to get straightened up. But So what we need to do, seek the Lord and His righteousness, and everything else will be added down to you. Believe in Jesus, Jesus and you'll be saved, you in your household. You need to first have an experience with the Lord. And in your faith in God, in your belief in God, He will resolve the problems of your house and place your son on the on the location where he needs to walk. First, you, God is speaking with first with you, but first, He wants to improve this relationship between Him and you. And your testimony inside of the, your house is going to be fundamental. For the rescue of your son. And uh, there is another spiritual gift that says, I saw a woman that was very concerned in her house, trying to organize, but she was unable. Then a man come to his this woman and it would touch in the mind and the heart of this woman. And it was telling her that it was necessary for her to be born again, because everything was already prepared in eternity for your life in your household. The mind, the heart, feelings, thoughts. Remember Martha and Mary? She needed only one thing. And what was it? To be at God's, uh, at Jesus' feet. Martha was tired with many, many things, but there is one thing that is necessary. And Mary chose the good thing to do. Martha, not, not our sister Martha here, I'm <laughs> speaking here, generally speaking here, choose your portion. Make yourself available to the Lord because we cannot clean up. We cannot clean up. We can only organize. That's so why Jesus says, you need to come as you are, and whoever comes to me, I will never uh, push him away. So sometimes we want to organize our lives, purify us ourselves in order to come to the presence of God. You know when it's going to happen? Never. Never, ever, ever. Because whoever cleans is the Lord. Whoever organizes is also the Lord. So it's your blood that cleanses me. So only through the blood of Jesus we are cleansed, we are purified, we are sanctified, and we now organize ourselves. Our lives is organized by the Holy Spirit. That's why it speaks about being born again. Because wherever is in Christ is a new creation. No one can be in Christ if they are not a new creation. Because Christ is the one that has the power to transform man's life. What I, whoever I was, I no longer am, am not all that I need to be. And Christ does this. 
you will never be able to do this to organize yourself and clean, cleanse yourself. But Jesus Christ, the Son of God, has God has this power to purify and sanctify your life and cleanse your life and transform your life and making you into a new creation. Amen. I'd like to invite the church to stand up. Is there a song? Lord, we pray to you. We are thankful for yet in this moment of fellowship and that your grace, love, and mercy may rest upon your people throughout this week. Healing, saving, delivering, bringing peace, comfort, refreshing, relief, joy, Lord, in our hearts, to the homes, to the family members. Lord, we ask that you may also open the doors that are necessary for your servants for their survival in this country. Bless and help in their needs. Give us a week of blessings. We pray in the name of Jesus. In the name we say the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, love of God, and the good intent of Father and sweet intent and consolation of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit, Holy Spirit may be with people of God now and forever. Amen. The church may be seated. The service has come to its end. You, my brother and sister who is who are with us, we want to say that you are welcome here. Help service every Thursday at 8. A prayer service every Saturday, 6 o'clock in the morning, early dawn with the church and at six o'clock in the afternoon a women's service and 7 30 service of glorification of the lord every sunday at 7 30 uh 10 30 sunday school in the morning and 7 30 at night and service of glorification of the lord if you need a prayer glorification uh, or clarification of what the, the spiritual gifts and of the message we are here at your disposal we'd like to remind the church we're in the second week of the month of march and the orientation for our children to meet and adolescents is that there is a consecration from zero to nine or from five until the end of the service throughout this week. We're going to the seminar on the 31st, Saturday night, actually 30, and uh, um, Sunday morning, 31st, it's going to be eight, I believe it's going to be eight or, or nine in the morning, the other seminar. The church is invited to participate tomorrow. We we'll to invite the youth. We're going to be a meeting on Zoom on YouTube for, with all the youth in America and Canada. And I wish everyone the peace of the Lord.